Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are making a worthless box. This is a box that simply turns itself off when you turn it on. Uh, a lot of fun and a really simple thing to build and just a way to it kind of spice up your woodworking a little bit with some electronics. Now I'm not gonna be doing the electronics on this because it's a hand tool channel. And so I've actually teamed up with another channel. I'll leave a link to that down below and up in the cards where you can actually see how all the electronics go into it. But today we're actually going to build the box and the structure for it. So let's actually dive in and have a little bit of fun. Now I have to start this video out with a bit of a confession because this is the finished box. And you'll notice that I don't do any videos on the dovetails. That's because for some reason I accidentally deleted the files. Uh, so if you wanna see how I do dovetails, I'll leave a link to that down below. Uh, basically, I'm just going to be dovetailing the four sides of this and then we'll actually get into how this is made. So if you wanna see dovetailing, I got videos on that. But for right now, we're just gonna have fun making the rest of the box. Sorry. Now, since the dovetail's already done and it's all been clamped up, we can take it out of the clamps. You'll see these little blocks that fall off. Those are actually calls so that it's squeezing right on the actual joint itself. And then we can start smoothing it out. You'll notice how I'm not planing all the way across the box. I'm just planing towards the middle. And that way I'm not going to be tearing out the fibers right on the outside as the pins are sticking up or the tails, depending on which side I'm doing. And so I'm stopping halfway and kind of lifting up right at the end. And uh, sometimes that means I have to go across grain and sometimes that means I go with the grain. But either I can come back and clean it up with a card scraper or I can clean it up by setting all the settings on the plane a little bit smaller. Now we need to make the base for it. And so I have this piece of walnut that was cut a little bit larger than the box. And I want to trace out inside and outside where the box will fit into it. What we're going to be doing is creating a groove that runs all the way around this that the box actually sits down into. So I'm gonna be deepening that line with a chisel, just chopping it down a little bit. You can see there's not much of a tap on here, especially when I'm going with the grain. I wanna just, uh, just crease the line a little bit. And then we can start paring out to that line. And it's gonna be a lot of this repeat. Chop down, pair out, chop down, pair out. And while that may sound familiar if you've watched any of my channels before, because that's really kind of the basic of all woodworking. When you go with the grain, it's kind of fun because you get this whole splinter that pops out. And uh, every time you go down a little bit deeper, the, the, the splinter gets a little bigger. Now you'll notice that the, the groove I'm making on the inside, I'm just leaving it rough. I'm not actually making it a quarter inch wide to fit the box. Um, because no one is going to see inside the box and nothing is going to be stored inside the box except for electronics. And the box will automatically close itself um, when you flip the switch. And then to bring, make sure all the bottom is equal all the way around, I'm just going to bring in the router plane and plane it all down to surface. Then we can do the test fit and make sure that the box slides down into that groove really nice like. I know a lot of people are going to be asking about cross grain connection. Um, in this case, because it's so small, the cross grain on this really is not something to worry about at all. It's a, it's a pretty moot point. Now I want to put a chamfer on the bottom of this box so the chamfer will go all the way up to the edge of the box. And so it's a little longer on the two ends than it is on the front and back. And that is just uh, the way I like it. It make, made it slightly different. It's not all perfectly symmetrical. When going at the end grain, you see I skew the plane so that it's basically shooting up grain and uh, gives it a nice clean look there. Chamfering it all around and we can glue it in. Only after pounding the box down in, I realized, wait a second, I still need to mark the lid. Um, so I had to quickly pull it out of the box and then flip it upside down and put it on the other block of wood and mark out for the lid. Oops. <laughs> um, on the lid of this one, I only need to mark around the inside because it's actually going to inset into the box and the top edge is going to sit flush on the top. Next, we can take the top over and I want to cut it to size. I'm not cutting it right on those lines I drew. I'm actually cutting it about a half inch away, so I have a lot of extra to lay with. I want to deepen those lines just a little bit so I know where I'm going. Now, rather than creating a groove on this one, I'm actually going to create a shoulder running all the way around this. So rather than it being you know, a groove that the box sits into, it's actually going to be a rabbit that the box sits into. So it sticks down inside the box and is flush on the top all the way around. So to that line, then we can pair everything out. And on sides where it's a little large left over, um, I'm just paring down at an angle and I'll come back and cut that out later. Uh, I originally was going to pare it all down just like I did before, but then I realized because um, because this isn't a, you know an actual groove, I can actually run past the ends. So for the long grain, I just brought in the router and ran those from end to end and created a groove that the box will theoretically fit into. Though I'll be cutting off the excess on the outside. I just want to make sure that they all come down to the same depth all the way around. Now for the cross grain, I could have used the router, but it's not um, it's not perfect for cutting down a lot of depth. 
And because these are so small, it was just easy to come in and chisel out and then do the final detail with the router and bring it down to its, its final depth to make it match the rest of the groove all the way around. You also see there's a saw curve there where I cut down the shoulder rather than uh, splitting it out or um, chopping it out with a chisel. Just is fairly easy to bring in the, the, the uh, saw and slice it down. Now we can check the fit and make sure everything is the way we want it to and make sure that it does slide in inside the box. Now the next thing I need to do is cut the outside all the way off of this all the way around so that on the outside it is flush with the edge of the box all the way around. So that's just bringing it over the bench and slicing off. And it's kind of nice because I have that, uh, had that groove there which creates a natural line. I just need to stay a little ways away from the outside of that. And voila! Um, you, can see, uh, you can see better from this angle. There's actually the, the little bit of the groove sticking out. And that's fine because I can plane that off. Uh, it's just cutting down is a little bit faster than uh, planing it down to that thickness. Then we can clean off any little bit that's sticking over. And uh, I just, I don't know why, this, this part is really enjoyable. That little bit of pairing and the nice little curls coming off. Yeah, happy. <laughs> And we can uh, make sure that this is good and, and ready to go. We're going to smooth it out and do some of the detail work on it because once it is glued in place, it'll be harder to work on. So we rough it out with the jack plane and then come in with the smoother and smooth it out really nice like. Then we can fit it into the box. Um, oh, yeah, before doing the box, we actually need to make sure that the, the lid itself is flat and flush all the way around. Make sure there weren't any chips coming out. Um, yeah, oops, forgot that. <laughs> then we can glue it into the box. And you can see how this will just stick down in, and it will overhang a little bit right now. And once it's done, we can come back and uh, plane all that off. And so, yeah, you can, you can never have enough clamps. And I've got a whole pile of different clamps. I don't know why I, I have so many clamps, but I use them all. So then we can bring the plane in and plane it off smooth to the edge of the box. And to just be careful not to blow out. You can see there's a little bit of the paduk I blew out there. I'm letting it go a little far. On the end grain, uh, it was easier to bring in the low angle plane and, and run across with that. And then I'm going to chamfer this down so that one edge of the chamfer meets the very top of the box and the other, other edge of the chamfer um, comes in the same amount as it did on the other side, if that makes any sense. Um, <laughs> just making it even chamfer all the way around. Then we can bring in the card scraper and make sure that everything is nice and flush. If there was any tear out that happened because of the plane, um, the card scraper will take care of that. Now we need to actually cut this box. We put a lid and a bottom on it, we glued it in, and we need to cut it in half so that there'll be a top and a bottom to it. Putting a little bit of tape on there um, helps protect it so there's less tear out, and as long as you are clean and accurate with your saw, you'll get a really nice clean cut. And I chose a carcass saw, which is actually a cross-cut saw, um, which feels weird running um, along the grain. So you see I'm actually ripping with this cross cut. But the nice thing about ripping with a cross cut is it leaves a thinner cut. Um, it leaves, not, not, excuse me, not a thinner cut, it leaves a, a cleaner cut, there's the word. And the saw will actually um, burnish the edges because the teeth are more like knives than they are like chisels. And so you'll get this nice um, smooth cut, whereas a, a rip um, may actually leave burrs on the edge. And it was so clean that actually I didn't have to plane it. It just uh, it fit. Now I need to take the lid and I need to slice the lid in half. Um, and this is so that there's two halves. One half will have a finger that comes out and the other half will have the switch on it. So mark out where the middle is on that. And then we're going to do the same thing again. Bring in the carcass saw and slice the lid in half. And then we'll have all of the pieces ready to go on this. And this was a, a really um, satisfying point. I, I, I really took my time on this and made sure that the cut was clean, made sure that the saw didn't skip and, uh, and, and cut through it. And this one, particularly because the, the top, the inside, goes in another uh, little over a quarter inch, actually. Um, it, was, it, it felt like I should be through here, but I'm still actually cutting through the top. Then we can put it on its edge and cut through to the, the two sides. And there we go. We have two tops to the top. See how thick that is on there. Now, originally I was going to do some carving on the top, but I decided not to on this one. It just, I wanted to keep it simple, um, especially with having the electronics on there. Um, we need to put a switch on, and this switch is what you actually flip on and off. And so I drilled the hole that it fits down into, but I need to recess it through because the top is thicker on this than the one that came with the kit. And originally I was going to cut it as a rectangular hole for the switch to fit down into, but then I just thought, no, oh, just cut a circular hole and it works perfectly. And uh, there you go.
Now we need to do a little bit of carving because the top was so thick, the finger that comes over uh, would hit the top uh, where it would naturally be. And so I actually need to carve away a groove for that finger to be able to come out of the box. Because the kit it came through, um, the, the box walls were only uh, a little over an eighth inch thick, if I remember, remember correctly. So I sliced out a little bit on that, and the finger was ready to come out. The other thing I needed to make was a divider that goes inside that the motor will mount onto. Um, and I was just matching whatever came with the kit. And it was a little piece of uh, white oak that I had, a uh, quarter inch thick. And so I made it to the correct height, made it to the correct length, and then it fit into the box. It needs a, a couple slots and uh, a hole put through for the arm of the motor. And then there also needs to be a gouge cut out because this is a lot thicker than the divider that would have been in the box for the kit. So I need to carve out a good chunk and then drill two holes for the screws to go in. So bringing this quarter inch down to a little bit thinner than an eighth inch uh, with chisels and uh, shoulder plane. And now we can attach the, uh, the hinges. So I'm going to clamp it all in the box and I'm going to mark out. You can see the marking knife's not going all the way to the corner. Um, I don't want it to run past. Then I can bring in the marking gauge and transfer those lines exactly so that they all come down to the same point. And this will allow me to go all the way to the, the corners. Then we can start chiseling them out. Now these only need to go down a little bit less than a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm, I'm taking my time. I don't want to blow out past the end and uh, not putting a lot of pressure on the chisel, just a nice sharp chisel cleans through this padoop. I, I tried using the bench as a reference uh, because I can't come around the other side due to the base sticking out and it just didn't quite work because normally I'd use a router plane on there and I don't have a small router plane which I'd like to get one of these days. Um, well I have the router plane I just don't have the the cutters for it. And so we can come in and clean it out and make sure that it is all um, right about the same depth. We don't want anything that's um, anything that's sticking out because we want these hinges to stick flush. Then we'll do the same thing on the top. Uh, make sure that those match up and that all of the lines are on there. That's why we clamped it together ahead of time to make sure that the hinge um, was marked at the same time with the top and bottom. And then we'll do it on the other side as well because there's four hinges on this thing. Mark out the center point of where the screws are. It's very important to mark these rather than drilling. Otherwise, if you drill without marking, the drill bit might wander around a bit. Wander around a bit. Ooh, I like that one. <laughs> so we're going to drill out a, a hole that fits the screw. And I put a little bit of wax on these screws, make them easier to go in. I, I'm using a T-handle screwdriver with a ratcheting function uh, that makes putting these little tiny screws in very easy, allowing you to get a lot of force and control um, on the screws so you're not stripping them out. And that is about it. Uh, I think we're ready for finish on this. Um, it just took a little bit longer to put those hinges on than I was expecting, but I was very happy with how it came out. And the walnut and maple, uh, excuse me, walnut and white oak and paduke, um, just a little bit of everything. I didn't want to put carving on, otherwise this would become really flashy really fast. And uh, just didn't, uh, I, I like the simplicity of it. And as you can see, hey, that's all it does. You flip the switch off and the motor comes up and turns it off. <laughs> Happy day. As you can see, I am really happy with how this came out. Um, this is just one of those cool things that I, I've been enjoying and I'm, I'm in love with it. So yes, this is a, a great project and a lot of fun to have. So I hope you like that. If you'd like to see more and actually see how the electronics go into it, you can go over to James's channel. I'll leave a link to that down below and up in the cards where you can actually see how he makes this whole thing function. As you can see right now, it's not there because I need to send it to him. He'll put all that in there and it'll look magical. But uh, for right now, we're having a little bit of fun with this. So I hope you like this. Um, if you'd like to see all the information on the, the parts inside and all of that. I'll leave links to those down below so you can see that there. And I think that's about it for today. So until next time, have a wonderful day. You are worthless.